In the 1950s, the Soviet Union made great progress in nuclear technology. In addition to nuclear weapons, they successfully developed land-based nuclear power plants and nuclear-powered engines for military ships. At that time, the Soviet Union was also committed to miniaturizing nuclear reactors. Inspired by this, Yefim Slavsky, the Minister of Mechanical Engineering, proposed the idea of a mobile land-based nuclear power plant. Due to its vast territory and high latitude, many cities, settlements, and bases in the northern regions of the Soviet Union were relatively independent. The harsh environment and high costs prevented them from being integrated into the power grid. They mainly relied on independent thermal power plants for electricity, which consumed a large amount of fuel annually. Fuel shortages were also common. Establishing lightweight mobile land-based nuclear power plants could solve this problem. In the late 1950s, Soviet designers developed the TES-3, based on a pressurized water reactor. It was a mobile power station installed on a modified T-10 heavy tank chassis with a power output of 1.5 megawatts. Although it can be considered a mobile nuclear power plant, it was an early experimental equipment that only started generating electricity in 1961 and underwent numerous tests. It was discontinued in 1969. After that, several other devices were also developed, such as the Dimitrovgrad VK-50, which included the Gamma that may have operated for 20 years, but none of them were considered mature products. Building on this previous technology, the Nuclear Research Institute in present-day Belarus developed the Pamir-630 mobile nuclear power plant between 1976 and 1985. It is currently the world's only nuclear power plant installed on a wheeled vehicle. Although only two units were built in the 1980s, it was indeed a practical nuclear power plant. The Pamir 630 used the MAZ-796 military trailer as its towing vehicle. This vehicle had strong load-bearing and off-road capabilities. The power plant and other equipment were installed on the trailer platform at the rear, similar to a semi-trailer when in motion. The trailer platform housed a 630-kilowatt nuclear reactor and a turbine. The reactor was surrounded by thick radiation shielding walls, reducing external radiation to an acceptable level. However, this vehicle did not contain all the necessary equipment. The nuclear power plant also required two additional vehicles, one with a reactor control computer and another for accommodation, capable of housing 28 people. With these three vehicles, a complete and independent mobile nuclear power plant could be formed. It could be maneuvered to suitable locations as needed. The highly mobile vehicles could operate in the Arctic tundra and marshlands. The related equipment was designed to operate in low-temperature environments suitable for the northern regions of the Soviet Union. The designers hoped that the Pamir 630 could operate continuously for 2,000 hours after refueling approximately 83 days, which would be sufficient for normal power supply demands. However, during testing, the Pamir 630D actually operated for 3,000 hours without running at full capacity, indicating that there was still fuel remaining. This means that the Pamir 630 exceeded design expectations in certain aspects of performance. If nothing unexpected happened, the Pamir 630 would enter actual production. Its applications were quite extensive, providing power not only to residential areas but also to military bases and remote mining areas. It could even establish emergency power supplies during wartime. It did not require frequent refueling and had a relatively small size. The Chernobyl nuclear accident in 1986 directly affected the fate of the Pamir 630. This incident revealed the horrors of nuclear leaks, and the people of Minsk, in particular, strongly opposed the Pamir 630 because the testing site was only six kilometers away from the city. The Soviet leadership also became hesitant as they could not afford another nuclear leak accident. Therefore, the experiments were terminated in 1988. Scientists attempted to launch a new nuclear power plant project in 1990, but it was not implemented due to a lack of funding. People believe that the technology related to the Pamir 630 has greatly helped Russia. 
Many countries have attempted to develop safe and clean mobile nuclear power plants in this century. The academic Lomonosov, a mobile nuclear power plant developed by Russia in recent years, is a typical example. It can provide electricity to coastal cities and offshore drilling platforms. There may be more similar devices in the future.